want on Twitter, you you asked about the virgin birth. I don't know if you want <laughs> if you still have juice, if you still have energy to talk about that, or if or if or if. sure, why not? <laughs> well, the, the 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 one of the things that is important, I would say, in Christianity is understanding that the the role that Mary has to play, let's say, in the same in the same in the same way that we talk about how the reality of Christ came let's say had to manifest itself in the world for us to understand that the possibility of this thing the possibility of how everything comes together right uh in the same way so in, for example in the old testament you have theophanies you have places where god and humanity meet so on the mountain of moses in the temple uh, in the Garden of Eden as well. So you have these, they're usually at the top of a mountain or they're at the end of a temple. Okay, so it's still a mountain in that sense. And so that's a place where two worlds meet. That's the narrative world and the objective world, really. Exactly. So the the, the invisible world and the visible world, the, the world of, of, of logos, the world of pattern, and then the world of possibility, right? They come together. And then that's when the, the, the coming together at that point is where you see something. So it's like that for for everything. That's like everything where miracles happens. occur. Yeah, but not just yeah. Miracles are like super events. Like they 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 show us the pattern of reality in a more in a in a more concise way. But everything is like that, right? So even a, a chair is a bunch of possibilities, right? That encounters an idea, can encounters a purpose, a logos, and then then you have a chair. You can't have just a bunch of stuff, or else you don't have a chair. You need that to meet. So at the center of every thing of everything that exists there's a little temple a mini temple and there's a little incarnation right a little like a mini one it's mm -hmm, not i'm not mm -hmm. i don't want to don't want to, to to seem uh uh heretical or anything but there's this little like mini thing that happens and so that aspect has a has a a, a lower part which is the the nexus of possibilities the coming together possibilities and then this thing that this logos which comes down so this nexus of possibilities you could call it a mountain a house a temple a body, that's Mary, right? That's that's her. That she's the place of manifestation. So she's the Ark of the Covenant. She's the temple. She's the mountain. She's all of that. Um, and so, and then in, and then we play that role. You could say the church, the body of Christ. We play that role. We come together in love, and then the divine logos descends and manifests to unite the body right, together, and to reveal himself in that unity of the body. So we see Christ in the unity of love. So Christ says, they will know you by how you love each other, because that's how you know that a body exists, is that it's coherent, it holds together as a body. Um, and so this body has to be dedicated. It has to be dedicated to the thing which it's manifesting. So like, let's say, Let's say you have a turkey, you know, uh, a car and uh, two bits of grass and you think I'm going to make a chair out of that. Well, it's not going to happen, right? It's I not really going to happen. I think you were going to go that route. <laughs> <laughs> but that's this is it. This is what it's about. It's not going to happen because that's not dedicated. And so in the same way of, a, of a, a woman and her husband. So a woman has to be dedicated to her husband for the union to be recognized and fruitful. So if a woman is, is, not, is not faithful to her husband, then there's confusion on the identity of the child, right? But if a woman is dedicated to her husband, which means that she's actually a virgin to all other, other identities. She's virginal to all other identities and she's dedicated only to the one thing. So this idea of virginity is super important because it's about dedication, it's about not being mixed or not being that's non uncontamination uncontamination and so then you can understand that in order for something to manifest the entirety of the whole pattern right so it's like so so for 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 someone to be the place of manifestation for the whole thing the well that is what a mother itself. does like right it's what a mother that's does because she dedicates herself great to a greater or lesser degree to bringing someone perfect into being and the more she loves the more she dedicates herself to that in every possible way so now the virgin mary is the extreme cosmic version of that where she has to be perpetual virgin 
she is a cosmic virgin. She is perpetually virgin, virginal because she's like, you can imagine like, in order for the sun to reflect upon the waters, it you has know, to be You know, and all those men who don't believe that sort of thing should take <laughs> careful stock of the fact that they're frequently terrified out of their skull whenever they encounter someone they're attracted to. Mm -hmm. They project that or see it instantly and, it, and it, 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 it demolishes them. And then if they're rejected, they're crushed. And you can think of that as a projection, but you can also think of it as seeing more deeply what's there and that you only see that when you're actually attracted to someone. Mm -hmm. And then that attraction has a basis because you're seeing what they could be, even if you're not seeing what's there. And so that's, so the, that's why the necessity of virgin birth, because she, she is revealing the highest, right? She's like, the, she's like a still ocean which is, on which the sun is reflecting. And if it was mitigated, then it would only reflect a mitigated manner. And then everything in between is mitigated. Like I said, it's like a woman who's faithful to her husband, obviously is not a virgin in a technical sense. You could say she's, she's a virginal to others. She's untouched by others, but she's dedicated to the one man, just like- Well, and you know, the degree to which that's entangled with genuine virginity also isn't the case, also isn't so obvious. Yeah. You know, it isn't, we don't know what the preconditions are for for setting up the ideal relationship. And, and it's certainly the case that we bring the baggage of our previous relationships into our current relationship. And maybe sometimes that's for the better and maybe the virginity can be symbolic, but people can certainly be sullied by their past behavior and sometimes in a way that they can't figure out how to, how to, how to repair. Yeah. Well, for sure the Christian ideal has always been the, the, the union of virgins in the sense that then the dedication ends up being tighter, right? And so you are dedicated to your husband and your husband is dedicated to you and, and then you're unmitigated mentally even, right? Like in terms of memories and in terms of comparing and in terms of all of these things which we do as human beings. Uh, and so it, it, it can prevent slippage in terms of your dedication. Yeah. So I don't know if that makes sense in terms of yes, understanding well, I, I, why. I wasn't, I, I mean, you know, these things, <laughs> grasping these things slips out in and out of my capacity. And I mean, I, you, you did a lovely job there of, 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 of making a symbolic account for the virginity of Mary. I, I understand that. I understand. Well, but no one's going to prove the virginity of Mary historically. I mean, that, that, that's not, that's something which is not, that obviously is not possible. It's a secret. There's a secret aspect to virginity, which is actually part of its function. And it's also part of its, how can I say this? It's part of its, of its mystery, right? Which is something which is, which is not public. You know, it's, 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 it belongs to the identity. It belongs to the, you know, it's like the, the dedication of something belongs to that which is it's dedicated, right? We can it talk about to this to some degree. I mean, yeah. I, <sighs> imagine that you wanted to form the perfect union with someone. Hmm. Well, let's say it's the perfect sexual union for that matter. I think that requires love. I, whenever I've had in my life a, a sexual experience that wasn't associated with love, uh, it, I didn't feel right about it. I, my mm -hmm. conscience bothered me very much, very rapidly. And maybe that makes me an outlier, although I don't think so. I think, I think that that is how people react, but they refuse to notice. Hmm. Now, I might be wrong about that. Maybe I'm a prude. It's possible, although I don't think so. But it's possible. But it always struck me that sex was best undertaken within the confines of a committed, of an ultimately committed relationship. That otherwise it was lesser. It was the lesser, it was less than it should be. It was sullied. Hmm. And I, now, well, I don't have anything more to say about that than that that's been my experience. And so, and I don't know what the preconditions are for establishing the perfect marriage, let's say, and the perfect marriage would be one that brought about the best possible children. These are not trivial things. They're very difficult things to get right. Certainly you want the least amount of animosity, unnecessary animosity possible between the parents. You want the union to be tight. You want it to be based on love and commitment. That seems clear even from the psychological literature.